your imagination. It's going to save you or it's going to kill you, one or the other. Not a lot of leeway between those two. That's just the way the imagination is. Now, last week we talked a lot about overwhelm, right? So when you're in overwhelm, your vision is very tunnel. This tunnel vision sees what is. It does not see what could be. That's the purpose of imagination. Imagination shows you what could be. Imagination is critical to life. There is no progress without imagination. That Golden Gate Bridge doesn't get built unless someone can first imagine it. The Empire State Building doesn't get built unless someone can imagine it. In the same way, progress in your life doesn't happen until you can imagine it. Because until you can imagine it, you can't assume it's reality. Until you assume it's reality, until you assume it's going to be automatically part of your life, it generally doesn't happen. So imagination is absolutely critical. Now, I'm going to give you a fundamental principle here, and I'd like, like you to consider this and even mull it over a little bit in the coming days. Here's the principle. All failure in life is a failure of imagination. All failure in life is simply a failure of imagination. What did the 9-11 Commission say about the U.S. intelligence community's failure to anticipate what could be? They said it was a failure of imagination. Now that's on the negative side, but on the positive side too, we suffer all the time from failures of imagination. Now I know for myself, when I become uninspired in any area of my life, when I no longer really feel the urge to go and do what I need to do, what needs to get done, what, what I should be enjoying, even if it's something as basic as my workout, then I know the failure there is a failure of imagination. If I lose inspiration, I have my imagination has failed me. That's really what's happened. So I have to go and get that back. Now, resilience training, and specifically the part about constructive imagination, teaches you how to get that, that inspiration back and get it back on demand, which is tremendously important, right? You have to be able to get your inspiration back. You have to be able to stay inspired all the time despite all the obstacles, right? And that's part of being resilient. You need to get your mojo back, absolutely. So what does this do? So constructive imagination, the discipline we call constructive imagination, it teaches you how to reframe your thinking. It teaches you how to recondition your thought process. And it tells your subconscious what to focus on. So instead of your subconscious just running amok the way it usually does, um, and you know, guiding you along tracks that are well-trodden but highly unproductive. Instead of that, you're telling your subconscious really what to do, what to focus on. And that in turn takes hold of your brain's reticular activation system and essentially points your reticular activation system in a particular way, which means your brain is gonna go out there and it's gonna be fundamentally looking for everything you need to succeed in that particular area. And it's gonna guide you along the path so you're setting yourself up for success using constructive imagination. Now, you'll notice I've used the term constructive. What's the opposite? Well, obviously destructive and undisciplined imagination is destructive. It is destructive. So if you know people who are constantly worrying, constantly catastrophizing, that's simply one expression of destructive imagination. Constructive imagination is absolutely vital. You have to be able to guide your imagination to where you want to go and allow it to pull in inspiration, allow it to open new vistas to you so that you can start visualizing those and eventually make them a reality. So we can't get into the how-to, obviously, in a short video like this, but let's put it this way. If you fail to develop resilience, what happens? Simple, you're trapped in survival mode. You're trapped in a destructive neurological state. If you fail to develop dominance, then, of course, you'll be unable to modify your circumstances. If you fail to develop your constructive imagination, what happens? Well, it's going to greatly limit your results, and it's really going to deprive you of the joy that should be there, that should be part of this journey all the time. So constructive imagination is critical, and it's part of that creative mode of the brain that's so important that we've talked about before, getting there and staying there. So creative, ins ins creative, Im <laughs> creative mode and constructive imagination go hand in hand. Tremendously important stuff. That's it for right now. If you want to learn more, go to the links below. As always, you know, like, subscribe, and we hope to see you back. See you next time.